Hey, I'm Carla Ross, and this is NewCherryBomb.com's latest edition of Sex in the News. Thank you for all your comments. I've really taken them to heart. So thank you, Mark, Peter, and Betty. I will try not to be such a fast-talking New York lawyer. I try to shake it sometimes, but it's hard. Now today, it's all about contraception. Today marks the one-year anniversary that the FDA approved Plan B, better known as the morning after pill, for an over-the-counter um, sale. So instead of having to go to your doctor or get a prescription and go to a clinic, you can just walk into your pharmacy and they can sell you Plan B right over the counter, which is tremendous for women and reproductive rights. Um, so to give you an idea of the scope, last year, they, after the approval, they have sold $80 million dollars worth of Plan B pills. The year prior, they sold 40 million Plan B pills. So the demand has doubled since they've made it available to women. Now, this is wonderful. I spent the morning on PlannedParenthood.org, and I was like, oh, it's celebrating. This is so great. So many strides, you know, that we've taken in um, women's rights, but I think reproductive rights. You know, we're finally at an age where the technology can really um, work for us in, in ways it never did before, where you don't have to go under anesthesia, you know, to choose not to become a parent. Well, there's two wrinkles to this plan B. One is a federal court did uphold a pharmacist's right to refuse to fill a script for plan B based on their own personal religious beliefs. So if you're a young girl, imagine a small town, and you go in for your plan B, and you want it, and you need it, and you have to take it, within 72 hours of sexual contact. So it's really a ticking time clock here. And if you don't get in within that time, so a pharmacist refusing to fill your script can really change you know, your decisions and your ability, you know, and what you're, you're going to choose for yourself. Because a lot of states, you know, they're running out of abortion clinics like crazy. So for a young girl, this can be very troubling. Now you still have to be 18 and over to, um, get access to over-the-counter. You'd still need a prescription if you were younger than that. But um, letting pharmacists pick and choose. You know, I had this thought. I, I thought I'd throw out this dilemma. What if um, an unmarried or a widowed man came in for a prescription for Viagra? Would a pharmacist refuse to fill it because they don't believe in premarital sex? Hmm, I think not. So I think this is, again, singling out young women. And that brings up another, the final point, um, getting minors access to the pill. And, you know, uh, abstinence adherents argue that it will promote promiscuity and that their programs are working because at the same time we have Plan B now over the counter last year, teen pregnancies and went down. So, and they don't know why. So they're saying, oh, ha, 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 it's because of the abstinence only, even though there have been about five or 13 major studies and 15,000 young teens were polled and what they found was that abstinence only programs do not delay sexual initiation. They do not reduce the number of teen pregnancies. It doesn't reduce the percentage of unprotected sex. Only 3% of teens will graduate high school virgins. The rest are going to lose their virginity first. So it's almost like, do you acknowledge them as sexual beings? Do we give younger girls, minor girls, access to a pill that can save them the physical trauma of having to have an abortion? Maybe if we do Plan B with some sex education, you know, so I think access is going to become very important in the next few years. And there's also a major study that just came out that I'm really excited about, tied into our contraception theme. Um, they found that abortion by the pill, which I don't know if you know what this is, but it's basically a pill you take after you're past that 72 hours, up until eight weeks if you choose. You can take a pill, and what it will do is it will stop the fetus from growing, and then a day later you'll insert another pill, and two days later more pills, and what it will do is it will help you expel everything out of your uterus. So basically, you can have an abortion at home without having to go under the knife, without having to go under anesthesia. And what they found is that women who avow themselves of this reproductive option have a 0% chance of later infertility. Zero. <laughs> this is amazing. We're living in an era when you can avail yourselves of so much of technology 
exist to empower your choices and allow you to choose when to become a parent like never before and imagine that you can anything can happen a condom can break and instead of having to have that heartache and that anguish you can just go you know what i'm going to stop by the pharmacy pick up plan b so i know i'm safe and then if something happens for whatever reason and it goes longer you're not sure you have a menstrual cycle with some women do when they're initially like first pregnant for month one and two then you can say you know what i'm going to do an abortion by the pill I'm going to know that I can still be a parent when I choose to be later in my life. So I think this is just a red letter day for women and reproductive rights. We still have more to do, but we're on the road. And um, I'm headed off to Mexico for Labor Day. Me and uh, Betty Dodson are going down to figure out our strategy for our internet video series. So more to come and enjoy your Labor Day.